Welcome to a Sailing Yacht Salty Lass video from Bangor. <laughs> we are not having that. <laughs> Straight in. Okay, so what's happening? Well, on Salty Lass, the weather's not great. Uh, so we're just finishing off a whole load of little projects. Actually, the weather is fantastic on Salty Lass, but it's pretty ropey outside. Well, that's true enough. But so uh, what we're doing is we're just finishing off a lot of little projects. So um, I've whipped um, the blocks into place on my cruising chute. And I've done exactly what one of our subscribers suggested, which was to fit the block to the sheet and then put a figure of eight on afterwards. I've also, because um, this was in... A... This is in the new snuffer, the one we were given the other week. Yes, it, with the new snuffer, the um, line that was tying the snuffer to um, the block that actually raises the whole thing together was in a sorry state. Uh, so I've just retied that. And I've also added a new shackle because um, the shackle we had was very loose. I don't know what Beverly's doing with the boat hook. Carry on. <laughs> I don't know what she's... Have I got a green head or something? Not anymore. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But yeah, so I had a, a faulty shackle. So I've just gone for one that's um, hot, more resistance because the problem with the one that I had, um, I could easily move it. That means it would fall off quite quickly. So that's one of the things I finished off. That's it really. Time for another viewer question of the week. Well, Gaynor has a quick slurp of her coffee. <laughs> mm. Now, um, this was a uh, question that was um, asked of us, which is, what was our essential items on a boat? So I ran with the ball and I put a post up on Facebook and I said, what are your most essential items on a boat? So what do they come back with, Bev? <sighs> Wife and kids, wine and beer, dog. Yeah. Nobody apparently seems to need things like chart plotters, life rafts, boat hooks, you know, things like that. It's just party, 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 it seems. So, <laughs> yeah, but you know. <laughs> so we decided that much as we'd love to do the survey says, <laughs> it ain't going to work. So what we're going to give you is what we regard as our list of essential items. Yours will differ because quite simply, you're on a different boat. Now, we, what we've done is they've, um, now these are all essential items. However, we split them up into two groups. Oh. One is minor, which is basically you can get away with other items. The truth is we haven't split into three groups called major, minor, and I don't know. <laughs> but that's now been rationalised on orders of the boss. In the minor stuff, we've put stuff that we did without for the first 18 months. So whether we have it now or not is fairly irrelevant. We know we can do without it if we have to. In the major items, we've put things in that we've found to be, if they're not aboard, life gets to be pretty painful pretty quick. Yeah. So, shall, shall we get stuck in? Yeah. Okay. On this list, there is no wife and kids, there's no, no wine and beer, and there's definitely no dog. So the first item is the life raft. Uh, this is in the minor category. Right. Uh, so obviously it is essential. Trust me on this. This is an essential item. No, it's only essential if the boat sinks. That is true. If you look after your boat and keep it afloat and don't hit things, then you don't really need a life raft and loads of people go around without one. Also, if you are have a dinghy like we do, then if all things fail then you can use the dinghy and um yeah as long, as long as you're not in the middle of the atlantic if you're like five miles offshore the dinghy makes a perfectly good life raft 
And another thing in the minor category is a good builder's bucket on a rope. Yes. Because, um, because when you want to clean the decks, you just hang it over the side and grab some seawater. That is so useful. The next one, which is an absolute beaut, might have you scratching your head, autopilot. Mm. You don't need an autopilot. We sailed for 18 months without an autopilot. Many people around this marina have no autopilot. They just go out and they just toodle around. They use the tiller, they use the wheel. It's nice to have it, though. Oh, yes. And if you are doing longer cruises, you know, then I really do think it becomes an essential item. It's great, it's great in cold weather. You just turn the <sighs> autopilot on and say, take me that way, and then get back under the spray. <laughs> it's really good for that. Thanks for this, for Annie. How are you doing, Skipper? Giving it to Annie. You was. I know. I can't even see the next boy, I can tell you. I think it's urgency may go up if you're single-handing. Exactly. Um, but if you've got a crew of six, then somebody always wants to be steering. Next in the list is a torch. It's a torch. Now, obviously, if you're doing any nighttime sailing like we do, um, then a, so a torch is pretty essential. The other thing I've used <laughs> for my torches is finding what's at the bottom of my handbag. <laughs> Yeah. That's just me. But if you're but if you're a day sailor, obviously you don't need a torch because you're in the daylight. If you are going to get a torch, though, uh, I really would recommend that you get one with plenty of lumens. Um, we, we call ours a headlight on a stick because apparently six hundred lumens is about the same as a car headlight. So, uh, and it's got a little handle on it, and it's rechargeable through the boat's electrics. So that's the kind of torch you need. Uh, we do have a few other torches, like we have ones that are uh, attached to the head, which are quite useful. Oh, yeah. Um, because it means that you can be hands-free. While we're on the torches, another one you've put in the list, which I find um, not really controversial, but might have some people scratching their heads. A light in the engine compartment. Yes. <laughs> you like your engine compartment well lit. I do. I do like to see what the heck I'm doing. Yeah, we, we, we sometimes sit here at night drinking wine, we open the engine compartment, turn the light on. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. But it's a good engine, but it doesn't get invited to social days. No, but if you're going to put a light anywhere, having a light in your engine compartment, just so that you can see where things are, just really helps. Um all sorts of stuff um so the jiggy hose um it's basically a self-priming siphon it's a siphon that has a glass bead inside a metal fitting and you put it in and you shake it up and down and the, the glass bead lets the the diesel come in or the liquid come in and then you can just do your siphoning without having to suck diesel i was going to say and as somebody who has had to suck diesel only on one occasion it is an occasion i never want to repeat in my entire life it's, let's put it that way it's Oh, absolutely it's horrible foul. ready stuff. Is a compass much use? You can't fill your tank with it, but it's, no, next, but it's next on the list. It is. Um, obviously for us, I think, uh, when well, you need it, we've yeah. got about four. We've got one on the binnacle. Uh, we've got a handheld compass. We've got one in the binoculars. We've got quite a few compasses, and we've even got one for land as well, but... Oh yeah, but we don't use that one. No, we don't use that one, but we do have a couple on board. And um... So yeah, with the compass, um, with all this GPS gear on board and things like that, people say, well, why do you need a compass? And the answer is quite simple. That um, There's been occasions where we've been in areas, and it's particularly up around southwestern Scotland, actually, where the um, you get a, a notice to mariners saying, as of this date and that date, um, the GPS signal will be interfered with for military purposes. And while well, your GPS goes off, boom. We have also been in situations where our entire 12 volt system went out. The, uh, as soon as she turned off the engine, all the electrics went. That's true. So so we'd, we'd, we'd know, we'd nothing left um, except... The compass. The compass, the binnacle compass. Yes. Yeah, so and, and we steered the boat by the binnacle compass. So all I need is a binnacle compass and a star to steer by. <laughs> It's definitely windy outside. The um, bubble wrap is starting to lift. Yeah, it's a bit of a windy day. It's a bit, 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 bit fruity out there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the last, last one on our minor um, list is a splicing kit. Um, yeah. You know, I've just been splicing. If you're, you're on a sailboat. You've got a couple of kilometres of, of, of string on board. 
I mean, it's just this, this rope everywhere you turn. There's about, there's about eight or ten ropes running along the coach roof. Some of them go to the mass. It's like 20 metres up and 20 metres down. It's, it soon mounts up. So with the minor items behind us... We're now on to the major items. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the major items which I have seen people go out with on a number of occasions is a radio. You mean go out with or go out without? Without. Um, like we actually rescued a boat once and they did not have a, a radio on board. They were uh, depending on their mobile phones and they had sailed into an area with no coverage. Yep. And their boat, um, their engine had gone and they were actually going towards the rocks, weren't they, Bevy? They weren't looking the happiest. It was, <laughs> it was a small it was a small motorboat sort of thing, um, not, not a sailboat. And um, we had to tow them in. <laughs> Yeah, but fast fast motorboat gets crewed by sailboat, <laughs> towed by sailboat. It would have been a great episode. But, it would have been, but but the thing is, we always have to ask. <laughs> they didn't really want to be on camera. But regardless, I do think having a radio on board is essential. And the other thing I would do is on your mobile radio is you can have one that's slightly lower watts, and then there's one that's got higher watts. Mm. Um, we went for the higher watts because it gives you more range yeah. and I think that's really useful. Uh, something I think is quite uh, important on a boat is, is I find quite amazing what you can do with a, a piece of wood with a hook on the end of it. I mean boat hooks, they are just so useful for grabbing things. It was very loose. I don't know what Beverly's doing with the boat hook. You wonder how the old parrots with a hook got by and the answer is they probably did quite well because with a boat hook I find it so useful for so many jobs. Uh, it's so essential that even when we're out on the dinghy we take, take the a boat, boat hook with us. That's one of the, you know, uh, which comes to the other thing uh, which we always take even when we're on the dinghy and that is our life jackets. Mm. Uh, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we you have life jackets on. And we've got on. two types. We've got the automatic inflatables, which we wear when we're in the main boat itself, and we've got a pair of um, just little what? dinghy vests. Dinghy vests, and they're just they're just polystyrene floats inside fabric. And they do help you as somebody who's been in in the yeah. water with one of those on thing. Obviously, when we're at anchor, we don't really have our life jackets on. Um, I should also point out that in some jurisdictions, um, I'm th principally thinking of um, the Republic of Ireland, yeah. uh, life jackets are mandatory. Another item we put in the major section, and really it depends whereabouts in the world you are, but in this neck of the woods we have them down as uh, pretty essential, and that's good clothing. Yeah, because, um, you know, like we have our mullions, we have to be warm. If you see us in the bright red, one piece suits that's because it's very very cold out mm. if you see us in the sky blue pale jackets and the salopettes it's usually a lot warmer and we're not quite as cold we're just looking for protection from the wind yeah so for us warm clothes are pretty high well we have to have them i mean say eventually you never know we might get to the bathing costume kind of situations yeah we're not there yet are we no we've got at least two three years before we go anywhere near those kind of latitudes so uh -huh. warm clothes is pretty essential as is water and food yeah um once, once again if you're a day sailor it's probably not much of an issue but having something to drink on board is probably always a good idea whether you're a day sailor or not um, especially water because um, the wind will dehydrate you yeah um, and um, if you don't keep yourself hydrated um, you can come into all sorts of issues even your you go barking mad exactly I once had um didn't drink sufficient water and um, I was actually um, barking, I was I barking was bark mad. barking mad I was barking mad but you know what I mean? I couldn't string a sentence together. Now that's... Not much has changed, really. <laughs> I don't know if we should have said that because the next item on the list is a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are so many ropes on your boat that you will need a knife. <laughs> now, obviously, we've got a knife in our pocket. We've got, so got a knife by the door. Got a knife by the door. 
Um, I use the kitchen knife on a regular basis for doing various tasks, you know, but whatever you do, if you do have a knife, for goodness sake, make sure it is sharp. Mm. I'm sorry, as far as I am concerned, a knife that is not sharp is... It's not a knife. It's not a knife. It's... It's a metal thing. Oh, that yeah. leads us on to... Well, it's not really lead us, but never mind. It doesn't lead us on to it at all. <laughs> but... Another item on the list is the binoculars. And, um, you know, we would just say for that, that we really appreciate the binoculars that have got a little light in, got mm. a compass in. I thought that having binoculars with a compass in was going to be a bit of a gimmick. Um, but having used it, I just find it so useful because I can say to Beverly, it's on a bearing of 220. And if I look down that bearing on the compass and the binoculars, I usually see whatever it is she wants me to look at. Exactly. And that's where it really helps. Yeah. Um, the other thing that the binoculars is great for is like, if you're coming into a situation, I'm looking at the chart, um, and I can see where all the voyage is. But you need to see that and, and get yourself geared for real life. So, Do you know what I like them for? I like them for reading the pontoon numbers off the end of fingers as you're coming into marines. <laughs> because when they tell you that you're going to be in Echo 33 and you've got no idea where that is, you get the binoculars up, you can read the numbers off the fingers. Mm. That We've done that more than once. It's really, really useful. We have. Um, um, we're now on to what I thought of as our third category. But only because... It's power tools. And we have done a blog on power tools are a girl's best friend. friend we have. We've, and we use them all the time. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Now, you would think that Beverly and I, because we like our power tools, like to do DIY. No, it's actually the reverse. No, I've got so many power tools because I hate doing DIY. I don't want to spend all day doing DIY. I want to get it over with in 10 minutes. And finally, in the really useful things, do not leave port without one. Vice grips. Yes. God, the number of things I've pulled apart with vice grips. <laughs> it's untrue. They are so good. They are. They have saved me so many times. It's just absolutely magnificent. Um, oh, by the way. And a few other things. Uh, can we just go back to life jackets for a minute? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, yes. Because I've got that over there. And uh, this is an arming kit for mm. a United Moulders 33 gram cartridge, which is a very, very common cartridge in UK life jackets. Um, the other week when we checked the life jackets, they were all okay, but I noticed that the cartridges, the, the, the firing cartridges, these things, had about four months left on them. Mm. They were all going to go ping in the summertime. Yes, which is not really great. And we looked at all, we have four life jackets on board and three of them were going to ping. Three of them are going to go ping in the summertime. One goes ping sometime next year, 2024. Yes, the other one's 2024. 24. So we've gone out and bought some new arming cartridges and I'm going to replace them all. It's a very, very trivial change. You literally just unscrew the old one and put this one in. And these are good till 2026. They're £10 each. So for the sake of £10... I'm just going to throw the old ones away because they've got a little tablet in here that absorbs water when you go in and then it dissolves and lets the, lets the mechanism move and that sort of fires the cartridge. But over time, damp will gradually degrade the tablet. And we, ha we have had one instance where one of these, somebody has banged it against something and it was enough to crumble the tablet. Boom! Off went the life jacket. So put, do put your items uh, down in the comments below. What but, you not, think but, but not wife and kids. Yeah. Not beer. And not the dog, but please send all the wine to the address below. <laughs> yeah, but do put your essential items and also keep coming with the um, questions because um, obviously like at the moment we were finishing off a lot of little trivial little jobs. You know, when we don't have a big job, a viewer question of the week really helps us. And when we've got rotten weather and we can't go out and get you sailing, then this is a... a a good alternative. It's a good alternative for us. Exactly. So do keep those uh, questions coming. So my job now is to get the life jackets out and put all these arming kits in them. Yeah. Should take me about a minute and a half. No. Probably, get... probably spend longer on zipping the life jacket. You get on with that while I sort out all the stuff. <laughs>